tonight on behalf of the people of the Church of St. Paul and St. Andrew and the people of Congregation B'nai Jeshurun, I welcome you as we raise our voices, raise our prayers, raise our hopes, raise our demands in concert with the people of Tibet. Prayers for peace and prayers for justice. Thank you for being here. History tells us that human desire and struggle for freedom, justice, equality cannot be suppressed forever by use of brutal force. The whole of Tibet is again under virtual martial law with massive deployment of armed forces right across the country with orders to shoot. We have selected six witness accounts from Tibet. I would now like to invite representatives from six different religious faiths and request all of them to read the witness accounts one by one. March 16, 2008. The Chinese authorities are locking up as many Tibetan protesters as possible in different jails. Many of them are detained in a jail behind the Patala Palace and four other prisons in the Lhasa area. The Tibetan protesters were locked in all these prisons like animals. In Kirti Monastery alone, 15 bodies were brought in for final death rites. Three bodies were also confirmed in a neighboring nomadic area. Members of our group, Seoul, monks being beaten and kicked by the security forces. The Chinese communist authorities had a total control over Tibet for 50 years. They failed to win the hearts of Tibet, which tells you something. There looked like 5,000 to 6,000 protesters. The names of the three people killed later are Senzin, Norbu, and Labseng Tashi. I told you earlier about a man who died from a gunshot. Yesterday, his family had planned to take his body away for a funeral. But then the police came to their house and seized the dead body. I will say my prayer in Arabic, and I just wish if I can say it in Tibetan. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Allahumma anta salam Nahi vire na virani Sammang tid kudachanang I hope that we will all remember that we are not spectators, we are leaders. Victory over war. Dum jo samu Oh God, we give you thanks and praise for our ability to gather here this evening to raise our voices in behalf of a gentle people. And in your good time, as is your will, enable us to all stand reconciled before you through Jesus the Christ our Lord. Amen. I can't tell you how much it hurts my heart. to know what has been happening to my Tibetan brothers and sisters. When our dear brothers and sisters the Tibetans who have worked so hard to rid themselves of anger and hatred and violence, have been pushed so far up against the wall 
so hard, with so little opportunity to express themselves in any positive way, they're left to violence. This kills me, kills me, this kills me. What a loss for all of us on this planet. What a loss for all of us in the universe. We pray that we will attain peace through nonviolence. The joint voices of concerns expressed by Pope Benedict, Nobel laureates, Chinese intellectuals, and the international community in the wake of the brutal crackdown on Tibetans in Tibet. It's a pleasure to be here as a commissioner on the United States Commission on International Religious Freedom. Such peaceful protests are protected actions under international human rights standards, and they should not be met by force or by detention. The Commission requests that and suggests that China could take immediate confidence-building steps signaling its commitment to guarantee religious freedom for Tibetans. The statement from the religious leaders uh, gathered here sends a very strong message to the suffering people of Tibet, assuring that the people in the free world care for them. This also sends a very strong message to the leadership in Beijing that people in the free world are watching. Thank <laughs> you.